Hey guys, how you doing today? It's me, Kelly. So I was really surprised at the amount of people that were interested in pastels. Um, a lot of you wanted to see uh, me do a background and a project with pan pastels and acrylic. Um, so I figured I'm going to start, I'm going to do something pretty easy, show you how you can build up and how you can do it, show you a few things I do to, um, you know, get that great effect. Pan pastels are wonderful. So I'm going to do this before I do my other videos with water soluble pastels and regular pastels. Um, so I just thought I'd do this, throw this in here and do this now. Now, let me tell you, uh, you're going to see me do a process that I do a lot. It's my mixed media backgrounds. I love them. Um, but you can adapt it to any way that you want. You can, um, use this in your art journal on ATC cards. You can do it wherever you want. Um, and I know that I have a lot of new people, um, who have been subscribed to me, uh, that are new to mixed media and art journaling and all that. So this is for you and, um, tell the people who requested it. So thank you. So here we go. I'm going to use just stamps and a few things, um, and paint. I'm not going to put down, um, normally when I do this, I put down, um, layers of scrapbook paper and all types of things. This I'm just going to do straight up. Uh, with paper and paint and, um, oh, my cat's taking my, excuse me, um, all uh, right then, my cat just took my, <laughs> took my, uh, thing there, I don't know, what the heck, I guess they're playing, all right, I'm gonna have to get that, so I'm just starting off with a glittery, uh, pink, I'm gonna start off with light and go dark and, um, put it on, uh, put it on, but as always, I start, this is just a piece of watercolor paper, um, which I love using. I love doing it because I love when I send uh, art out to people, random acts of kindness, and even sell sometimes. I love, some people just like to get it on watercolor paper rather than the canvases. Um, and it's cheaper to mail as well, but I like doing it on it all. But I'm almost out of canvases because I've been working on a lot of paintings. So I'm just going to rock the watercolor paper. Now I have this and I'm going to stick with the pink and I'm just going to add some baby pink this was just pink glitter and I don't care that it's wet. I don't, it doesn't bother me. Just going to do like this. I mean, what is mixed media, but mixing different medias together. And that includes uh, acrylic watercolor, you know, paper, glue, stickers, pastels, anything you got. Now I did this and you know, I make a mess. I am everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. And what I'm gonna do is kind of give it just some twists to add a little bit texture. Okay, now I'm gonna hit it with my heat gun. Again, if you don't have a heat gun, don't fret. Use your hair dryer. If you don't have a hair dryer, go to the thrift store. You can get one for a couple bucks and use it for your uh, drawing your art or art journal or whatever you're using. Um, a heat gun is basically used for embossing, um, which is a fun process on its own, but, um, that's it. <laughs> you don't have to uh, have a heat gun to do this process. You can just let it sit for 10 minutes or you could uh, use your hair dryer or blow if you like to blow. Do you like to blow? I don't know. All right. So that's it. I'm just going to. And why I'm going to draw in between my layers is because I don't want it to mush and mush together. If I throw another color on here right now, it's going to make a very light pink or it's going to make mud because it's all going to go in together. So when I do my, my mixed media, unless I'm, I mean, I've done it while it's wet. Oh my God. And that's what she said. I can say that every time I open my mouth anymore, but this is how I like to do it. Now remember, markers, pencils, crayons, watercolor pencils, all these different kind of things you can use in your mixed media. It's like no holds barred. So you can you see, let's see if you can see it. Can you see all that texture I added? Now you can see the glitter underneath, not that great. It's kind of cloudy out today. It's not the, but you can see that shine and the glitter and the pink and how the paper towel made this delicious kind of texture. And that's kind of what we want. Not kind of, it is what we want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, what am I going to take? 
All right, I have my Distress ink pads sitting here, but I'm not going to use those right now. Those are not permanent. Um, and I want something to be permanent on here. Black's going to be a little harsh, but that would mean I'd have to dig all the way on the bottom to get my other pads. So let's just stick with black, shall we? All right, and I'm just using Ranger Archival Ink. You want to use Stazon Archival Ink Memento, something that's permanent. Again, because that, and I'll show you. I'll show you what that does. So first I'm going to start. And I'm going to put my um, stamp here. And I'm going to throw it all over the place. And look, I got some black on there already. doesn't matter. And I'm going to stamp it. And I'm just going to touch. Now I should probably put something under here that's a little more, um, you know, some cushion for your pushing kind of thing. But I'm just going to mark it up everywhere. I don't care, I'm gonna mark it up everywhere. Now what you can do is lay it that way, lay it upside down if the freaking thing would focus, and then just lay it on like that, give it a push, and you get a much better stamp. So that's up to you. You do it whatever you want. Because you're the boss of your canvas. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to add, I'm going to show you what it does. I got some of my, now these are almost gone, all the ink in it, but this is worn lipstick, distress, distress ink. I'm going to take a, just a regular stamp and I'm going to stamp it all over. And I don't need a full, a full print if I don't want it. And then you can just kind of tap it all over to get the rest of that off. Now let's go for another color. And then I'm going to show you a little trick in a minute. Let's do, I'm not going to do a rose color. Let's do frayed burlap. And again, I'm going to just lay it all around. And you can, again, same thing. You could lay it on the ground, on the ground. Oh my goodness, it's sticking. You can lay it here and just hit it and then see what you get. You can really see that or you could tap. Oh my goodness, it's sticking. It's crazy sticking this vinyl. It ruined up my perfectly clean area. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then I'm just gonna tap it everywhere because I don't need anything spot on right now because I'm just using it for texture. Okay, now I'm gonna hit it with the gun, with the dryer, with your uh, hair dryer, with your heat gun, or just leave it stick for a couple minutes. Blow on it again, whatever you want. Now, I'm looking, and I really love this part right here. Can you see how that really now you can even see the sparkles in there but can you see how nice that is right there that looks like a little webbing so i like that so i'm going to use that on um another part of this when i do it but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take a little bit of white paint this is translucent white so i don't so much want translucent i just want some white i thought i grabbed white um white white and yellow all right so I'm going to do white first. This is just uh, titanium white. And I'm just going to put a little bit there. Now, do you have to use a paintbrush? No, I love using uh, these kinds of sponges or makeup sponges. And I'm going to show you, I got a little tip coming up later. Um, I'm going to do a video on, but you see how I picked that up and it's a circle. So I'm going to get that same circle going around, but you can see it's picking up some of that uh, paint, but I don't care. I want these little circles in here that I'm, I'm causing, but that's a great way, you know, to get a different kind of texture that you want. And then I'm going to do some yellow. Now the yellow I'm going to put in strategic places. No, not really strategic, just wherever I feel like pushing the button. And what I'm going to do is, where'd my thing go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Uh, uh, uh. All right. So I'm going to take my scrapey and you can use a credit card. I thought I had, oh, here it is. I thought I had my Sally's beauty card. <laughs> it's expired. Um, but what I'm going to do is just take this and I'm going to 
go like that. Now, you might want to wait until your white is dry all the way if you want. You don't have to. But you can because it'll make sure it stays like that underneath those circles. Honestly, right now, I'm just kind of showing you. And I don't care. And look how cool that looks. You got all the great, great, great texture. All right. So I'm going to dry it now because I really don't want to lose all that. And you can see it pulled some of the uh, ink pad through the brown. And I love that. I love it, I love it, I love it. I know. Where's the pan pastels? Are they coming in? Yes, they're coming in. But something about pastels. Think about pastels as, and like I said, I'm going to go through more detail of things when I do my next video, but so many of you wanted to see this in the, you know, using it in mixed media that I wanted to do this first. But let me just tell you, think of pan, think of pastels, not pan pastels. Pan pastels are pastels, except they're in a pan. You dig the name. Um, but think of them like oil paint, because that's essentially what they are, uh, except they don't dry permanently, where oil paint will eventually cure and become, you know, permanent. Um pan pastels or pastels in general do not. Now they do have uh, water soluble oil pastels and we'll get into that in another video. Um, but you definitely can <clears throat> do things um, to add them into your backgrounds. Now you can see, I love this. I love this. But what I don't like is this little white booby right there. So I have a little bit more paint on here and I'm just going to kind of twist it in just so it has some color around these sides. And I don't care if a little bit of it smears, I can go like that if I want, you know, and just try to get some of that color on there. Okay, now with your thing here, spray your water or put it in your watering thing. And what I like to do is I just spray it with a little bit of water. And I'm gonna take my handy pandy paper towel thing that I just keep drawing and using over and I'm going to kind of blot it out on here and what that's going to do is save this so it doesn't dry hard and I would do it twice. See how we're doing? Now you definitely could take it into the sink and wash it if you want. But that's it. It'll just won't let it, it you know, it'll be usable over and over again and that's kind of what you want. But if you don't want it and you buy them in bulk at the dollar store, you know, I love the makeup sponges. Then by all means, throw it away or snip it off. <laughs> snip it off. Yeah. Okay, so we have this. So let's go on to, let me grab a couple stencils so we can do this. And I want to start, I'm just going to grab these pan pastels. I don't know if I can get everything in order here. But we will. We will. All right, let me show you the, let me, let's do this. Okay, we're going to do this. All right, I'm going to lay that over there. I'm going to move this out the way. And all my markers. I have my camera up high, too. I thought I would be able to get more in, but it's all right. Okay, so look at your paper. Which way do you want it? Do you want it to be this way where everything's running this way, or do you want it to be like this? It's totally up to you. I'm going to move out just a bit. Okay, so I've talked about these a million times. I got this in the scrapbooking section where the scrapbook paper are. They have tons of different things that you can get to uh, use as stencils um, for very inexpensive if you can't afford to get stencils. I have paper ones and I have, this is plastic and I got this. So I'm going to lay this right here. And what I'm going to do is take my thing and I'm going to take this off because I've muddied it up. Now I can wash it off to use it. So I'll throw it over there. And then I'm going to look and see what the heck did I do with my, here they are, with my little doohickeys, with my little uh, knife covers, as they're called. And I'm going to get one and hope I don't poke through. But nobody wants it to poke through. All right, so I'm just going to lay that there, take one of these. And you can have these, you, you save these, you can have them for every color that you have, or, you know, like I said, wash them out, which is what I do because I'm cheap. Come on, David, just come out to mommy. All right. Come on, mommy. Come on, baby. 
Stick into the plastic. Stick into the plastic. All right. Let's get to good. Okay. So I'm just going to stick it in. All right. And let's hope I don't rip it again because I'm really good at ripping. All right. Not exactly the funnest things to put on. Come on. There you go. Okay, just don't push too hard like when you get down to the end because I always push it through. All right, so we're going to start. I like to start uh, light to dark, and I'm just going to work with the palette that I have, and I'm just going to pick. I'm going to start with this green color because I like it, and I'm going to look through my stencil, and I'm just going to kind of rub it on. Now, remember, some of that, um, get back on there. Some of the uh, ink pad that we used might come up onto your little spongy sponge, but that's all right. You can do a big area or a small area. And when you're about done with this color, pick an area and just kind of go over it to kind of kind of wipe it off. Okay, and then let's pick a bigger area for some purple. And that's more of a pastel color, but that's all right. It'll mute some of that out, it's what you want. And then some delicious blue. I like just to hold on to my stencil and just kind of go for it because that's the kind of girl I am. I love that blue. And you can go over, you know, go over some of the yellow or the green or whatever you did because it's just the colors are going to mix and just be beautiful. Just beautiful. And again, kind of rub it out. I like this little star here. I don't know what I want to put in the background, but I'm going to take a little bit of red like that and just kind of go in at these little stars. Some of these small little doopies on here. Add some color down here. All right, so I'm going to lift it up. And you can see it's added layers. Now you can definitely see the darker red, obviously, um, but you can definitely, I don't know if you guys can see it, but you can see what we've added so far. It just adds that delicious color. Now I'm not done yet. I'm going to use something else and I'm going to go darker. These are my lighter colors and I'm going to put the lid on it because I have a cat running around thinking that, she, that he's uh, funny taking all my stuff and grab these next ones because you know my magenta is in here I love me my magenta and you can see these are definitely darker those were more pastels pastel colors yes I know they're pastel paints all right so I'm gonna lay that like that put that like that and I'm gonna go in with this and you can see these little flowers and I still have some red, but I'm, I don't necessarily want them to be blobs. So I want to blend them a little bit. These ones down here are great. They're just enough. And I'm going to go in with this and hit these areas where and just clean off my brush, but it's hitting those areas that it hasn't done yet. Now I'm going to pick another stencil. Am I? Because I don't know where they're all at. Oh, let me show you. I'll do this one and then I'll show you. Let me see if I can show you this. These are, this is another one, not that one. Where'd it go? Here. That's another one right here. Oh, that's enjoyable when things fall off the table. This one's another one I got. I got it from AC Moore for a dollar. And it's all the alphabet. So you can, I mean, you really, and it's in their section where... Where my crap fell on the floor. All right. So let's take this. Okay. And let's go in with. Let's 
try some orange. Let's see if this is bright enough. I'm just taking that little bit. Now this is a stencil, but it's cut very thinly as you can see. So you want to kind of just, oh yeah, that's nice. Might be a little bit too thin for what I want it for, but I'm going to hit that there. And then I'm going to go in with some purple over here and just lightly I've got to hold it because this is a very cut up stencil. And then how about some of our magenta? Do that down here and I'm just going to run it across. And I want some up here. And it's just adding more, it's adding some color and texture. And you can see this really sucks to use it, but look at that, how nice. So can't complain too much. It's just hard with the um, thing. So now I have this, and these are die cuts that I made into stamps with my phone. I have millions of videos on this. Um, I know a lot of you request me to do another video on this, so that'll be coming up at some point. So I want to give us a blow because the pastel, um, is, you know, it's a powdery substance, so. But I wanna add this, but I don't want the top part. I like, I like that. Maybe right there, but what I'm gonna use is, I'm gonna use one of my sprays. And I'm gonna do the red. Let's try the red spray. Very little bit. You see how great that works? Now we're mixing another media into it. We're using our uh, misters, you know, our deco art misters, media misters. So that's our what media third. Now you can see this has paint on it. I can go like this. I can push it down and you get a completely different look. So that's what we're going for. Now I'm going to tell you, a lot of you asked me to do more videos on um, how to make our own sprays and glimmer mist and all that. And there's a million of them out there. And I know I have quite a few as well, um, but that'll be coming up too. But the Deco Art uh, Media Misters are permanent. That's what I love about them. There are also other inks, uh, ink sprays out there that are permanent. Dilutions is not, but Dilutions gives you the most beautiful colors. Matter of fact, let me grab one. Let me grab one. Let's see. Do I, I can't reach. Is my green there? I want my green. That's black. Uh, yellow might not be dark enough. Let's just do this. Okay. So this is a uh, bubblegum pink. And this is just to show you guys, and I'm going to show you how it goes in on here. Um, let's do our little spray right here. This is the, you can tell it's well loved. And you're going to see how this comes up. And I'm just using this right now. I probably should have grabbed another one, but I'm not worried about it. And then I'm just going to turn it over here to get some of that pink in there. And then I just take it as a stamp everywhere. Okay. So I'm going to let those dry for a second. I'm going to heat them with the gun. Now you guys all know that I love... <laughs> I love, love, love to throw white over this and push everything back the colors, but I like the colors to sink through. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, once you get to this part of doing your layers of what you, what you have, and like I said, I have permanent ink sprays. I have non-permanent ink sprays in here. I have pen pastels. I have uh, acrylic paint. I have uh, two different, I have a permanent ink pad and a non-permanent ink pad. So you see where I'm going. I have stencils. I have stamp. So you can see those are all different medias. That is mixed media. Now, <laughs> okay, so I have my little thing here and I'm going to wipe it off. Now I would advise you on another piece of paper, you know how I love to do it. I would wipe all this off on another piece of paper just to give some start or in your art journal, just to give some texture and color to a white page that you might be wanting to work on. But I'm just wiping it off here. 
And I'm going to take some white. And I'm going in with the white pan pastel. And this could be wet somewhere. I'm not going to worry about it. But I'm going to push some of this back. I want to keep some of this, but I want to push some of it back. Um, and I'm just going to start here. And I'm going to just kind of go in. And I'm going to swipe it. I'm going to swipe it through. Because you don't have to push all of it back. Although I do enjoy doing that. You guys know. If you guys have watched me long enough. You know I throw white on here and uh, go to town with it. But you see how I'm just taking this white? Now, yes, I will do uh, I will do projects with both of the other pan pastels as well. So you guys can see them all. Because I know pan pastels can be uh, a bit pricey. And I totally get it. I totally get it. Um, so I will show you guys the other types of pastels that you can use. And I will be doing a giveaway at the end. Not for pan pastels, although I wish I could. Um, but for the water soluble pastel. So all you got to do is sub and keep up with all the uh, goings on. Okay, so you see, I just put that white pan pastel over there. Do you see how it, you can still see these bright spots, which is great, but it pushes back. Like, let's look at, let's look at this right here. It was so bright, you could see a little bit of the bright. I'm going to put that white over there. It pushes it back to where it becomes a shadow almost. So I love that. Okay, so that's it. Now let's say you do this and you're like, you know what? I think I might have, over here, I might have whited it out too much and I'm not really digging it. Now when I use paint, um, whether I use black paint or white paint to black wash it out, black wash it out, white wash it out, you know, either way, um, if that's the appropriate, I don't even know what word that would be. However, um, I water it down a lot so I can control how much uh, paint gets on here and how much gets um, pushed back, so to say, the color. So I can take my art rag, my art uh, paper towel, whatever I'm using, or another piece of paper, and put it on there and pull some of that back on. The uh, You can use extender or you can use white uh, water and it would work out fantastic. With the pan pastels, however, you really can't. So once you put it down, now you can, I mean, obviously you can go in and you can wipe it, like watch. You can erase it definitely if you want. See how we can erase that off and make some texture just like that. So you can go through all of this. Look at this. Can you see how that's erasing it? Look. I'm adding a whole other texture here. Right? I mean, look at that. I got that great texture in there now, and I'm keeping it. So, but if you want to add a little bit more color, and of course you can, go in, take what the next color that you want, and then just kind of go over it. Put another stencil. Just do little, like, plops here and there. Who doesn't like a plop? And then look how great you got it. Okay, so that is that with that. And those are different, like I said, those are different mediums altogether. Now, two things that I do, and I'm gonna show you. You can take a spray bottle, which I have, I was just using it yesterday. Where'd you go, my friend? Here it is. You can take a spray bottle, and I must have it all gone, and I put it in the decoupage matte medium with water. Okay, and you just put it in there and you shake it up, and you can. I'm going to do half and half so you can see it. I'm going to spray it very light, you know, like this. It's a mist. This is a misty kind of uh, thing. Use that, or you can use this stuff, which is fantastic. I'm, I might do a giveaway on one of these because I am in love with the Spectrafix uh, pastel fixative. Um, you can use it for pastel, pencil, charcoal, watercolor, pencil crayon. So it's for everything. I don't know if we're supposed to shake it, but I'm going to shake it. And then I'm going to do the bottom half. Okay. Now you leave that dry or whatever. I'm going to just throw my heat gun on it. I'm going to put it far away though. And you're going to see some of the uh, pastel lift with the water and the decoupage because it's basically a water, so, you know, water solution. It's not going to hurt anything when you're doing mixed media. I don't think it's going to hurt anything at all um, because I like it. But you could see the difference with the, um, let me put that this way. You could definitely see the difference how this kind of, you know, didn't move much with the other fixative, but it's all in good. It's all good. Some people use 
uh, aerosol hairspray. I've never used it, but um, a lot of people have. So you can definitely use that too. A lot of people have had success. I had to get some hairspray and try it myself. But I'm just going to hit it with my hair dryer heat gun or leave it sit for 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, whatever. It's like 103 million uh, humidity here today. They keep threatening we're going to have rain again and massive thunderstorms, which scares the crap out of me anymore. But All right. I think you get the point. And this is our mixed media background with our pan pastels, pan pastels, uh, ink pads. What else did we use? Uh, acrylic paint, stamps. And what else? What else? Stamps, stencils. Yeah, all that fun stuff. So that's that so far. Now, if you get to a point where you you know, you're tired of drawing it and whatever, and you see a little bit, you can definitely go in and just pat up. I got some on there. Pat it up, pat it up. But you can see it doesn't, not a lot of it comes up. And now we'll be on to the next part of this, which will be another video because I've already kept you here for 30 minutes. But that is how we do a, vi a background with, um, <laughs> and a video. That is how we do a background with your pan pastels and your acrylic and all. So I'm going to do a test make sure it's all dry. I'm going to do a test. They're going to do a test. All right. I got a piece of paper here. I'm going to spray some water on here and let's see how much it transfers. Okay. So I'm just spraying some water. So you can see it's a lot of water. I'm going to put my paper down. I'm going to turn this is my paper upside down and I'm going to push it, push it real good. All right. Okay, so you can see that little bit. Now remember, dilutions and all that, that's uh, water soluble as well. But that's not a lot to transfer, and you still have a delicious background. So, and that might not have been all dried. So that's all, we use the dilutions, we use the uh, distress pads, uh, distress ink pads. We used um, the pan pastels, and that's all that came up of all that media we just put on there. So that's not bad. You can see this is the distress ink. I can tell that this is the uh, uh, dilutions. So you can see, not bad. Now that gives me a little bit of something to work with with the background later. So we're going to let this dry all the way, and then I will do another video um, tomorrow. I'll have it up with us working on here and doing a nice little painting on here. If it clears up, then you can really see it. And, yeah, so that's very fun. So let me know what you guys think of this. Um, I'm so, uh, so glad that with all the questions and the emails and everything that I've got about the pan pastels and everything. So I definitely wanted to show you how I work with them and uh, what I do in my mixed media with them. And like I said, I'm going to use each item that I have in the videos to uh, show you how you can work them into your uh, art as well. Um, sometimes you go to the store or you see a sale or you might get a random act of kindness from somebody and they give you these... Um, you know, you might get a pan pastel or you might get pastels, oil pastels, whatever, and you don't exactly know what to do with them. And this is a great way because they're nice and creamy and they, they blend beautifully. And to put them in your mixed media, I think is a great idea. So that is it. I will talk to you guys later. As always, be kind to each other. You never know what battles somebody else is fighting. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.